गोपाल स्वामी जीवन दर्शन पार्ट फाइव अ ग्लिम्स ऑफ द लाइफ विजन ऑफ सदगुरु श्री गोपालानंदा स्वामी शो द सल्यूशन टू पॉवर्टी हियरिंग दिस स्वामी सेड प्लेस दिस शालिग्राम ऑन टॉप ऑफ रीडिंग द स्टोरी इन द मिड्स्ट ऑफ दिस मीटिंग शालिग्राम असेंडेड द थ्रोन देन द स्वामी लुक्ड एट दैट शालिग्राम एंड सेड स्वामी नारायण स्वामी नारायण ट्वाइस As soon as he was Siddha Vishnu, one of the five Vishnu, he jumped up and fell into the lap of Siddhananda Brahmachari. Everyone was surprised to see it. Then Swami said to Siddhananda Brahmachari, "You should install that Vishnu next to Lakshmi Narayan Deva and worship it regularly. Therefore, there will be no harm to you in observing the vow of celibacy." Then Gopalananda Swami told Rathiram Pandit that how many sons and how much wealth do you want. Then he said that he would be happy if he would get three hundred rupees every year and his respiratory disease would be cured. Then Swami said that by worshiping this Vishnu with Vetha, one will not get anything but suffering. So if you do as we say. You will be happy in this world and hereafter. Then Ratiram said, "O Swami, I will do as you say." At that time, Swami performed satsangi and said that you should always come to this temple and know that Swami Narayan is the manifested God and do his daily bhajan and darshan. Then there will be no suffering in this world or hereafter. Hearing this. Ratiram absorbed all the rules and started chanting the manifest Shri Hari. Then said that these four are Vishnu Hiranyagarbha. Out of it, Nityaranya will give you gold, but your name is Ratiram, so Nitya will get Rati Bhar gold from every shaligram. Thus, he will get an annuity of three hundred rupees every year for the rest of his life. Also, four Vishnu will give you one son each. the burning of your accumulated sins since assuming the present has destroyed your disease of breath it won't happen any more having said this the four vishnu gave it to ratiram pandit after making prasadi with shri hari's mahamantra thus with the blessings of gopalananda swami ratiram pandit was saved from poverty freed from respiratory disease and had four sons He became happy in practice, and at the end, Shri Ji Maharaj took him home. Salvation of Brahma Rakshas. Once Gopalananda Swami was speaking about Shri Hari in a gathering of thousands of people. Jadwari Nagar and Hari Bhai Bhutia from Ahmedabad were sitting there. Swami asked him who is present in Ramanan Swami's satsang in Ahmedabad. He said that there are about forty of us. Seven or eight of us belong to the sect of Raghunath Das, who is a renegade, and Hari Bhai's father Himmatlal died and became a Brahma Raksha and became devoted to Hari Bhai's son. The reason is that Ramanand Swami gave six hundred rupees to be used for Sadavrat. He did not use it and suppressed himself. He has become a Brahma Raksha by sin. He tells Brahma Rakshas Hari Bhai that Ramanand Swami will save me if you give six hundred rupees to Sri Narnarayan's temple. I don't have any money. Where can I get the business that I am barely running? Also, my mother's father, who is my younger brother, has also become Brahma Rakshas. They have a lot of money, but no one goes to the house. the house has been derelict for several years hearing that swami said hari bhai it is true that both your father and your younger brother have become brahma rakshas but now let us save them both then the swami called the brahma rakshas with his yog siddhi by bringing a rope into hari bhai's body Then Swami told Hari Bhai's younger brother Ranchor Bhai that what should be done with the rupees stored in the basement. So, if this person who is Hari Bhai makes a temple of Mahadev for me, 
I am happy if he gives me rupees while doing ghumat in Shri Narnarayan's Dera in Ahmedabad, if he is a Brahman monk and if Haribhai himself takes the rest of the money, I am happy. Swami please save me. Then Swami said that as you have said well, we will do it accordingly. Then asked Haribhai's father Himmatlal that you speak now. Then Himmatlal said that Swami, what to do with six hundred rupees of Ramanand Swami? Then the Swami saw insight and asked Ramanand Swami that six hundred rupees of your Sadavrata was suppressed by Himmatlal Nagar. Your disciple Raghunath Das has taken that rupee. Then Ramananda Swami said that even if Srihari asked for the work of the temple, he did not give it and why did he give it to that Vimukha? So now take that rupee from Raghunath Das and give it to the temple. Thus, at the behest of Ramananda Swami, Sri Gopalananda Swami took six hundred rupees from Raghunath Das through Brahmaraksha's Himmatlal and brought them to the temple. Thus, by the grace of Swami, both Ranchodbhai and Himmatlal were freed from the bodies of the Brahmarakshas and went to Badri Kashram. Doom. Kallu village, a suburb of Vadodra city, was completely uncivilized and devoid of satsang before the initiation of Sadguru Gopalananda Swami's satsang work. Once, in the unbearable heat of the scorching summer, Sri Gopalananda Swami used to bring a congregation of fifty saints with him. Kanam was coming towards Vadodara after completing the satsang propaganda work in the country. Saints were extremely tired due to unbearable heat and fasting on Ekadshi. So it was not possible to reach Vadodara. So decided to rest in Kalalu. After reaching Kalalu, Guruvarya Shri Gopalananda Swami addressed all the saints and said, Saints, we all partake of Shri Swaminarayan Bhagwan's Prarabdha after taking shelter of Him. Saints were not much believed then. Then in order to convince all the saints about this, Swami asked all the saints to go and ask for their prarabdha. All the saints went to the village carrying sackcloth. After asking for millet in the whole village, only five shares of millet were found. Taking jover, all the saints reached Sri Gopalananda Swami near the village made Swamiji aware of the whole matter. Then Swamiji said, Saints, there is only so much millet in our destiny. So soak it in the lake and eat now remembering Shriji Maharaj. If Maharaj wishes, something special will be found in his destiny. While these kinds of talks were going on with the Santamandal, it was there that Amin of Vasuna came to Kalalu with his son's father-in-law. On seeing the saints in the village, they approached and begged for forgiveness. Also learned about the reason for coming to Kalalu and the incident of Khori Jover. After that, Amin immediately reached there with his wife and sent all the materials directly to the saints in a cart. Saints cooked and wished Thakurji auspicious. Later, the village of Kalalu became a satsangi with the preaching of Sadguru Gopalananda Swami. In course of time, Shikharband temple of Lord Srihari was built in Kalu village. Birjata Lalji Maharaj belongs to Sriji Maharaj's Prasadina. It removes the adhi, disease and happiness of those who come to see it. Samadhi Darshan Once Shri Gopalananda Swami came to Junagad. He used to talk in the assembly meeting all the saints. At that time Chakubhai and his brothers etc. Nagar Brahmans came to see Lord Swami and sat in the meeting. Then the Swami said, Show us that you perform Samadhi. Then Swami called Keshavdasji and made him Samadhi. Then Chakubhai and other townspeople looked at his pulse and breath but found no pulse or breath. Eagerly, he asked the Swami, 
Does this Samadhi bring something of the hereafter? Then Swami said, He will bring green cloves and sugar from Goloka. Then when two hours had passed, the townspeople said to the Swami, Now wake up this Sadhu from his trance. Then Swami looked at that Sadhu the moment he woke up from his trance. Green cloves in one hand and sugar in the other. Seeing that, all the townspeople were surprised and satsangi. Thus, Swami used to induce samadhi with mere sight and fulfill the wishes of the devotees and paint them with the color of satsang. Not only that, by the grace of Swami, Shriji Maharaj used to lead the devotees to the dham at the end. Miraculous Statue Sadguru Gopalananda Swami once came to Junagad from Vartal. Having seen God, he met the saint and sat in the meeting. At that time, Abhisinhaji and Zinabhai Adik from village Ganod came to visit Swami. He bowed down and sat in the assembly. Then Swami said to Abhisinhaji, Leo, we are giving you this statue of Maharaj made by Narayanajibhai. Keep it in your house and eat it as an offering. Light a lamp in the evening but do not worship God. Saying this, Swami gave the idol. Then the court together went to Ganod. Darbar put that idol in his patara and went to Pargamam and even when he came back, he forgot to worship the idol. It has been many days. One day in the evening when his wife went to the house, there was a light and Maharaj Marthiman was sitting on the patara. He said, When will you release him who has put us in prison? Saying that, Maharaj got confused. Then when Bai spoke before the court, he said, Alas, a great mistake has been made. This came in handy. Then after making a big gok, I placed the idol in it and started doing Pujathal every day. That idol is still worshipped by Brahman families. Fruit of Greed Jadwaji Bhai Seth in Gondal was a recluse devotee of Shriji Maharaj. He was the Kothari of the king there. He once came to Gadpur to see Shriji Maharaj. Bhaguji gave him six and a half rupees to make a good chofal for Shriji Maharaj and told him to make a good chofal and send it as soon as possible. Hearing this, Jadwajibhai Seth said, I will send it as needed. Stayed at Gadda for two days and went to Gondal. Calling the weaver there, he asked him to prepare good rice for Shriji Maharaj. I have six and a half rupees of it. I will give it when you get it ready. The rice was prepared and given in a few days. He went to the weaver with only six rupees of the material without taking labor as it was for Maharaj. Jadwaji Bhai immediately sent the rice to Gadpur Bhaguji, but half the increased rupee was not sent back and was used at home due to greed. Jadwaji Bhai had a hard time. The king threw them out of the barn and looted the house etc. Hence came to a very difficult situation. At that time, Gopal Swami reached Gondal from Junagat. Then the devotees told the news of Jadwaji Bhai. Hearing this, Gopalananda Swami called Jadwaji Bhai to him. Jadwaji Bhai came. Dandavatkari started crying. Swami patiently said that you have reached this status for just one and a half rupees. After listening to Swami's promise, I remembered that I did not return half a rupee of charity to Bhaguji and used it for house expenses, so I have come to this situation. Sambhari started repenting in his mind. So Gopalananda Swami felt compassion and said to sit, Show me what happened when you went to sell goods today. Seth Khori showed that one share of sorghum was found. 
Then Swami made two rotas of khori jowar to sevak Purushananda Swami and Thakurji ate with a plate. Gave prasad to all the saints and offered das das beads to all the saints. Thus the king's heart was cleared by the pious influence and Jadvajibhai was again employed as a kothari. Thus, the previous generation was practically happy. If half a rupee of charity was not returned due to greed, it was bad luck. So don't be greedy and don't use your Lord's money for your own work. Thus, Sadguru Gopalananda Swami removed the suffering of the reclusive Bhaktaraj with compassion, gave him true understanding and made him happy in practice. The Fruit of Breaking a Promise Nathuram Jani of Vadodara was financially weak. They had to give birth to their son, but as he did not have material, he spoke to Sadguru Gopalananda Swami. Then Swami asked, How much does Janoi cost? Then he said that Swami, 700 rupees should be spent. Once when Swami left Vadodara for Kalalu, Nathuram Jani walked with Swami for a short distance to see him. Then Swami got down, keeping the cart standing on the road, and taking Jani by the hand, took him a short distance across the road. There was an old banyan tree. Standing there, Swami said, Jani, you dig up some dirt here with this wood. Then he dug two cubits deep in the dirt, and saw there full of gold seals, and was surprised. Swami said that Jani, Take only five seals from them, do not take more. One stamp is worth twenty-five rupees. It will come to five hundred and seven hundred rupees. So your need will be fulfilled. Brahman Bhai, having awakened greed in his mind, took six instead of five and tied it in a knot at the end of his shawl so that the Lord would not see. Then Swami asked that by taking five. Then he said, Yes, Swami. So Swami says, Now fill the pit with all that dust. Jani filled the pit with dust and leveled the ground. Swami came and sat in the car, and asked Jani to go home and reached Kalalu himself. When Jani went home and left the knot, there were five golden seals and instead of the sixth, a big scorpion came out of the bag. So Jani got scared and threw him out with a knife. Then passed those five stamps to the market. Seven hundred rupees came to him. He killed his son with it. After some time after the experience of the scorpion, due to the rise of greed again, he went to the store of seals and dug a hole to take the seals, and a miracle was seen. A number of scorpions came out. Terrified, they returned home with their lives. Thus, if Gopalananda Swami's promise was broken and greedy to take more, it was sad. Indeed, Keeping the promise of a saint brings happiness and breaking it brings sorrow. Doom turned. Once Sadguru Gopalananda Swami reached the village of Zinjar and entered the temple there. At that time Darbar Khodbhai came and asked to cook. Then Swami said, We have been taking flour from Bhinnath. If there is dal, bring it. Khodabhai was practically a bit weak. So there was not enough dal to accommodate the saints in the house. So he pawned his sword at Vanya's shop and took three rupees and came to the temple with ghee, jaggeri and dal from that rupee. All those goods were given to Swami's servant Purushananda Swami. His monk cooked. Swami and all the saints ate with Thakurji holding a plate. Then in the evening, Godi, Arti etc. were performed in the night meeting and the stories, rules and rituals were performed. Then Gopalananda Swami said, Turn twenty-five twenty-five garlands. Then Shukamuni asked that O Swami, 
Why is this garland to be turned? Then Swami said, Darbar Khodbhai is practically weak and cannot even support himself. So if you spin the garland, it will be happy. Then Shukamuni asked, Darbar Satsangi is good, but why is it weak in practice? Then Gopalananda Swami said, He was a monk named Sevakram who met Shriji Maharaj in a previous birth. At that time, he did not pay even a penny of food to Maharaj after serving him, so he does not get enough food in this incarnation. Then all the saints turn twenty-five twenty-five beads and then sleep. Since then, Ambhin Khodbhai has practically recovered. Thus the one who serves God or God's saint and pleases him, even those who have a hard fate, become better again. Akshardham instead of Khorda. Once Sadguru Akshar Murthi Gopalananda Swami went to Bhayavadar with sixty, sixty monks of his congregation. Nagar Brahman Maya Ram Bhai was brought home there. The next day the river came and brought it down. Then Maya Ram Bhai etc. Haribhaktas cooked together. Thakurji has gathered all the saints. After that, he used to hold a meeting and talk. Swami said to all Haribhaktas in that meeting that whoever gives us a place to build a temple in this village, we should give a place in Akshardham. Hearing that, Vipra Jadwaji Maharaj stood up in the meeting and stepped on Swami's feet and said, Swami, I have taken the place of two cows. I let the temple do that. Saying this, Swami brought Khorda's article forward and offered it to Krishna. So Swami was very pleased with Jadvajibhai and Swami built a temple there. Thus Jadvajibhai was given a call to Akshardham instead of Khorda and finally went to Dham with Sri Jimharaj. Evil Result of Lust When Brahmananda Swami was building the Junagadh temple, there was a big bureaucrat named Rangildas Nagar. He was very averse to satsang. He went to the Vadodara Sayajirav government to get a stay order for the temple. A satsangi Haribhakta came and told Brahmananda Swami this. Hence, Brahmananda Swami came to Gopalananda Swami doing Mahapuja of Shaligram in such a meeting below the summit. Brahmananda Swami spoke to the Nagar official and said that here you are doing Tulsi Patra peak on Shaligram, but Rangildas is coming to build the spire of the Junagadh temple. Therefore, Gopal Swami said that if Rangildas reaches here, he will make a peak. After a few days, Rangildas was coming to Junagadh on horseback. Then a pheasant, bird, flew on the road so that the horse sprang up and Rangildas fell from the horse and the spear in his hand pierced his heart and died there. Thus the thorn of Rangildas, who had betrayed the satsang and the temple for no reason and harassed the saints, was removed and the summit of the temple was completed. Thulsidas has said, Saint Santapejat O, Raja Dharma Aruru Vamsa Tulsi Tino no Rahe, Ravna Korva Kansa. Avoid lust. A devotee of Bhadra's gem used to undergo samadhi, but libido was not avoided. Even though he was in Grihasthashram, he kept constant attitude in the form of God, assumed the idol outside, but the libido in the soul was not avoided. So made four houses. Saying that when one woman died he remarried the second woman and when she died the third and when she died he remarried the fourth woman. When he Gopalananda Swami explained the method of meditation when he had intercourse that meditating on the idol of Shriji Maharaj by uniting one's soul with Aksharabram. In this way the Ratna devotee meditated. So the libido which has become one with the jiva is destroyed. At last he renounced the world and accepted the asceticism and became a saint in the name of Vigyandasji. 
protection from Indra's wrath. Yogiraj Gopalananda Swami was once wandering in Panchmahal district with a group of saints. There, seeing a very hilly region in the bush, the saints prayed to the Lord to sit in meditation as it was a suitable region for meditation, but there was a fear of wild animals. So Swami says, all of you sit in meditation. Leto gave the cord around the saints and said, Now meditate in peace. No animals can come inside the enclosure. Indra, the king of heaven, came to know that these saints would do penance and snatch my Indrasana, so he rained heavily to break the penance. Many attempts were made to break the penance, but not a drop of water came inside the litter. There was nine feet of water outside the bed. Many trees fell. Thus Swami protected the saints from wild animals and the wrath of Indra. When Indra failed in his attempt, he apologized to Gopalananda Swami. Then the Swami said, By the grace of Lord Swaminarayan, the happiness of Panchavishya is equal to Kagvishta. Such feelings are playing with our skin. Thus Swami showed His glory and showed His scroll to Indra. Indra realized that this is a very great man. Indra apologized and went back. Miraculous Parcha Shri Harina Once Gopalananda Swami was sitting in Vadodara. Then a learned Pandit came to Swami and said, that if you have made Sayaji Raja and many learned Pandits your disciples by showing many miracles, then why should you show all such miracles to a monk? You are misusing this achievement. A monk should perform bhajan, miracles should be performed by hypocrites. After listening to the scholar Pandit, Swami asked the question, Siddhi true or false? Then the Pandit said, true. And Swami asked another question, Whose achievements? Then the Pandit says, Of God. Swami also questioned whether the permission to use Siddhis is from God or not. Then Pandit replied that God can use Siddhis. At the end, Swami said, If I have done as many miracles as I have done in my life, then all the sins in the world will be on me. May God not give me a place in His Akshardham. I have not performed a single miracle. This is what Lord Srihari shows through us. Such was the supernatural status of Swami. The learned Pandit succumbed to Satsang and became a disciple of Swami. Lord as Saints once Gopalananda Swami reached a mountainous region while wandering with a group of saints, where sixty saints were buried in the mountain cave. All the saints remained in trance for six months. On the other hand, Swami appeared as sixty saints, made shoes, clothes, garlands and wandered in satsang for six months. Then after six months, survey brought the saints out of Samadhi. Swami reached Vartal with all the saints. Then Shriji Maharaj was very pleased. P.O. He embraced the Swami and expressed great joy. Do not miss cooking. Once in Vartal, Narayanagiri Bhava served food to Shriji Maharaj saints and devotees. Shriji Maharaj after eating the thal made a row of saints and prayed a lot. After that there were rows of devotees, but as the number of people got too high, the cooking was lost. Then Narayanagiri told Shriji Maharaj that the cooking was missing. Then Shriji Maharaj said, Look in your yard, there is a lot of sweets. When he came to the yard, he saw forty mounds of dudpak and forty mounds of satajalebi cataract pans. Very surprised and asked where these came from. Then it happened that when Sadashibhai of Vadodra celebrated his father's anniversary, the people who were there shouted that you follow the Swaminarayan religion, 
so we will not eat. So did not eat all night. This time Yogiraj Gopalananda Swami said that don't worry about anything. Your cooking will not spoil. Then on the order of Swami Sadashiv Bhai's daughter Umiya Bai, and Rev Bai went to the Samadhi and picked up both the pans and placed them in the Vada of Vadkal Narayan Giri Baba. Thus Shriji Maharaj's Pratap Gopalananda Swami did not miss cooking and satiated all the devotees with Jamadi. Sight of Supernatural Opulence Narayan Sanskrit Patshala was running in Petlad. Many Brahmans and Pandits were studying Sanskrit there. Gopalananda Swami once visited Petlad Patshala. Then the Pandits there challenged the Swami and said, Swami Narayana is not God and the sect is unvedic. To what extent do you believe that is God? Then Gopalananda Swami said, Who do you believe to be God and to what extent do you believe? Then the Pandits say, We believe Shri Krishna to be God. He lifted the mountain, showed the universe to the Mother. So it cannot happen without God. Gopalananda Swami smiled and said, May God show you wealth, but just look at me. When the Pandits looked at Swami, light emanated from Swami's body. Visions of the universe began to appear from Swami's mouth. Then there were visions of Rome and Rome universe. Stopped showing up after a while. Swami says, If a monk has such opulence, what to say about one whose Guru is God? Thus, seeing such a supernatural opulence, the Pandits bowed down at the feet of Swami and accepted satsang, greatly impressed by Swami. Great Qualities of a Monk Ramji Joshi of Bhayavadar served Yogiraj Gopalananda Swami with great devotion. Satisfied with this, Swami asked for a boon. Ramji Joshi said, The five things become like poison and the idol of Sri Hari appears in the distance. Then Swami was pleased and blessed that the five subjects will gradually become like poison but the idol will appear from now on. Having said this, the idol of the Lord began to appear faintly in the distance and with time the Panchavishayvasnas were completely avoided and Ramji Joshi received Bhagwati Diksha. Mahapurush Dasji Swami became a great saint. Thus Shriji Maharaj would fulfill the promises of Swami. This is mentioned in the treatise Purushottam Nirupna. Once in Vadodara, Ramji Joshi prayed to Yogiraj Gopalananda Swami to please tell him his opulences, power etc. Then Swami said, Sahajananda Swami's knowledge is still visible as it was when Pratap was one month old. Akshar and Purushottam are also seen to resolve. All the living beings of the Anantakoti universe appear like a lamp in a lantern. Rain happens when we resolve. Still we are nothing before Shriji Maharaj. Thus the riches like avatars were in Swami. Although Shriji Maharaj gave Swami the best qualities, Swami Muktananda easily behaved naively, becoming a servant of Swami. Keeping riches hidden. Maharaj fulfilled whatever he resolved. Ashtanga Yoga was accomplished. Swami possessed the great qualities of a monk. The Glory of the Story Once Gopalananda Swami and Shukamuni were doing a Katha in Mahmudism. Then a big ball of light came down from the sky and settled on Tulsi Kyara. The ball of light disappeared into the sky as the story ended. Then Shukamuni said, Swami, what was the secret of this sphere of light? Then Swami said, Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh came to hear the story. Even the gods who understood the glory of the saints came to hear the story and see. Thus the glory of the Lord understood the glory of the saints. Ramchandra Vaid became a satsangi. 
सयाजी राव गायकवाड ऑफ वडोदरा अ वेल नोन रामचंद्रा विद्य ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट वॉज वेरी हॉस्टाइल टू सत्संग रामचंद्र विद्य वॉज अ ग्रेट डेवोटी ऑफ डाकोरनाथ रणचोदराई ही यूज्ड टू गो टू डाकोर एवरी पूनम शांटिंग डाकोरनाथ वंस अ लर्न्ड ब्राह्मण नेम्ड हरि भट्टा शास्त्री बिकेम वेरी इल हिज नेफ्यू रामचंद्र केम टू वोर्न विद्य रामचंद्र विद्य सेट आउट इन अ बुलक कार्ट अ मीटिंग ऑफ योगिराज गोपालानंदा स्वामी वॉज गोइंग ऑन एट वन प्लेस ऑन द वे सत्संग स्टोरी वॉज गोइंग ऑन रामचंद्र वैद्य आस्क्ड हूज मीटिंग इज दिस देन हरि भट्स ने फ्यू सेड दिस इज द मीटिंग ऑफ स्वामीनारायण गोपाल बाबा सो स्वामी रिजॉल्व टू मेक वैद्य वेल हेंस द बुल्स स्टॉप्ड मूविंग ट्राइड अ लॉट बट द बुल्स डिड नॉट मूव फॉरवर्ड सो द डॉक्टर गॉट डाउन एंड स्टार्टेड वॉकिंग बट वॉट इज दिस Vidya's legs also got stuck. Can't go on. Where Gopalananda Swami walked sideways, his feet started walking forward. Ramchandra Vidya Gopalananda came to Swami and said to Swami, "Are you showing this miracle? I have no god except Dakornath." Then the Vidya said, "If you heal Hari Bhatta Shastri, I will believe." Then Gopalananda Swami said, Hari Bhat will be cured but the kusang in you Shri ji Maharaj will give you raw mangoes and perform satsangi in a day or two Hari Bhat Shastri was cured thus completed a resolution once Ramchandra Vadya went to Dakor along with his wife Amrit Bai to see Dakornath while having darshan there the sky spoke that we say Dakornath the supreme lord manifested in this turbulent kaliyuga has appeared on earth and his saint gopalananda swami is visiting if you do his satsang you will be well being he came and resolved on the way now there are no mangoes in the month of bhadrava if swami narayan gives me raw mangoes god is true god welcomed the doctor and said that dakornath has sent it He gave to raw mangoes to Ramchandra Vadya and completed the resolution. Hence Ramchandra Vadya and his wife assumed the present and became true satsangis and stayed with Gopalananda Swami in Vadodara and took up the satsang present. Kusangi performed satsangi to a Brahman. Ramchandra Vadya Shri Gore was the leader of the Brahman lineage. He decided to perform the Sarsia Lake ritual to change Janoi on the day of the rebellion, infuriating the Brahmans. Six hundred Brahmans reached the Sarsia Lake with carts carrying direct water. Ramchandra Vidya also invited Gopalananda Swami to come there, so that the satsang story also happens. When Gopal Swami Thakurji and Santamandal reached Sarsia Lake. at that time some hateful brahmans openly protested that if gopal swami stays here we will not stay here saying that bus loads 200 of brahmans separated and went to the other side of the lake and started performing the ritual seeing this gopal swami said don't worry at all 400 400 brahmans thakur ji and we are with you Swami anointed Thakur ji after bathing changing clothes and everyone coming out Gopalananda Swami threw a small stick into the pond so that all the water was absorbed when the brahmans sitting far away prepared to bathe they looked in the lake and there was no water at all then the brahmans got angry and went to another lake then swami dried up the water there too hence the brahmans remained without a bath then they started cooking but the dal rice did not rise did not cook there the visible cooking stopped so the brahmans got tired and apologized to gopalananda swami swami made everyone see and it became like there was water in the lake then the brahmans bathed and changed clothes 
satisfied the survey. Thus showing such opulence, Kusangi made satsangi to Brahmans. Once Ramchandra Vadye said, Invited Gopalananda Swami for a meal, also invited fifty Haribhaktas for Prasad meal. Along with Gopal Swami Thakurji, Ramchandra Vadya visited his house. His brother Harichandra Vadya prepared the plate and took it to Thakurji of Gopalananda Swami. There Shriji Maharaj himself appeared and started eating. Ramchandra Vidya's temple had idols of Panchadevs. He also appeared and started singing the thal. After Thakurji was eating, Panchadev also ate prasad and disappeared. The word of this miracle spread all over Vadodara and many devotees, divine people from Vadodara came to see out of curiosity. Survey was surprised to know that. Ramchandra Vidya assembled Gopalananda Swami and the Santamandal and assembled all the brothers who came. Even though 700 people ate the food prepared by 20 people, the offerings increased a lot. Seeing such supernatural splendor, the divine people accepted satsang and became devotees of Shriji Maharaj. Swami used yoga power. Once Yogiraj Gopalananda Swami was enshrining a Nath devotee in Vadodara. Then Shobharam Shastri came to invite Swami for dinner. At exactly the same time Narupant Nana, a representative of the Sayajirav government, also came to invite Swami for dinner. Thus one day Gopalananda Swami was confused by two invitations at the same time. Shobharam Shastri thought that Swami will go there to the king, but I will not come there. There, Swami says go, both of you get ready, we will come for dinner. So both Swami, Shobharam Shastri and Sayajirav Sarkar went there to eat together. Gave great happiness to both the devotees. Thus Shriji Maharaj Pratap Swami, adept in the art of yoga, fulfilled the price of both by showing opulence. Mice and Cat Welfare Narupant was the brother-in-law of Nana Sayajirav Sarkar. Once Gopalananda Swami approached Narupant Nana Tedva to meet with the Santamandal. A cat lay down on the road with a dead mouse in its mouth. Hence Narupant Nana says, there was a great omen. Swami says, after Thakurji is with us, there will be no such omens and omens. Swami clicked, there the cat mouse came and stood in front of Swami. A rat also came to life there. Then Swami looked at the rat and said that after one year you will die and this supreme Haribhagat will be born there as a son. Thus, the rat was pleased to give birth to Haribhagat there and got salvation. Haribhai Kandoi gave birth to the cat two years later as a daughter there. Thus Parsuttam Bhagat as the rat Motibhai took birth there as a son and Haribhai Kandoi as the cat Divaliba took birth there as a daughter. After birth nature was together, but after doing satsang, one left the vices of nature and became a good satsangi. At last reached the abode of God. Such supernatural pratap Swami made Narupant Nana free from doubts and brought welfare to mice and cats. Shobharam Shastri received satsang. Shobharam Shastri of Vadodara was a devotee of Lord Shiva. He was an officer of the Gaikwad government library. One day Shobharam Shastri said to Swami Narayans, Haribhakta Dhaneshwar Tiwari that your Gopal Bhava shows many miracles, but God is only one Shivaji. Shobharam Shastri sent Dhaneshwar along with Gopal Swami to offer Dhatura flower and Billipatra to Mahadev. Dhaneshwar Tiwari gave this bill and flower to Swami. Then Gopalananda Swami gave a garland of rose flowers and said, Give it to Shobharam Shastri and tell him to offer it to Lord Krishna, the King of the Universe. 
Then Shobharam Shastri said, I have come to worship in the morning but now Sayaji Gaikwad will come and offer it. A miracle happened when Sayaji Rav came to the temple for worship. Bilipatra given by Shobharam Shastri and Nilkantha offered by Pushpa Swami to Mahadev were mounted on Mahadev in the state Deva Mandir here. So Sayaji Rav asked, Who worshipped Mahadev? But no one knew. There, Mahadevji appeared himself and worshipped Radha Krishna with rose petals and disappeared. Seeing such a miracle, Shobharam Shastri became unmoved and became a good devotee after realizing the glory of the Lord and taking satsang. In Vachnamrita 2, Shobharam Shastri has asked many questions to Shriji Maharaj and the mind is settled. Thus Gopalananda Swami's oneness with Shriji Maharaj was shown. Sun for stone Suryanarayana was setting behind the hills of Panchal region. Godhan village was coming from the boundary of Panchal, which was made holy by the sacred Padraj of the Pandavas. Vagdo became deserted. At this time, a Koli named Ravzi of Kundani village came home with his broken cart and weak bullocks. His wife informed her husband that a monk has come to the temple today. Who became unconscious after hitting your page? Today, if you go to the temple and ask for their forgiveness, we will be saved and if God gives us a son, the hierarchy will be preserved. Ravzi heard his wife's words calmly and said, I will go to the temple and see Swami. When Ravzi Koli went to the temple and saw Sadguru Shri Gopalananda Swami, he was overjoyed. Years ago he had seen the Lord, the saffron garment on the same limb, such is Swami's personality showering with compassion, his charming speech brimming with devotion, the sound of Tulsi in the dock and Tilakchandalo on his forehead. The sight of Gopalananda Swami was commendable. Ravji went near and started punishing Swami. Swami recognized, Are you that Ravji Bhagat or not? Are you skilled? Yes, Lord. I like the same. Where is the skill from? Parents, Sadguru Shri Gopalananda Swami, who avoids the sins of the human heart, understood that Ravzi had something to say but could not speak in the meeting. So Swami said, Ravzi Bhagat is happy, isn't he? In response, Ravzi Bhagat's eyes began to rain. Swami says, Ravzi Bhagat tell me whatever is your pain. I will avoid your pain by praying to God. So you calm down and tell me anything you have to say without hesitation. The doors of Raji's heart opened after receiving the consolation of Swami's compassionate look and sweet speech. He freely presented his grief to Swami as follows. You may remember that a stone was hit by my hand on the street of this Kundani village some years ago. Yes, why not? You got angry with the village merchant and the shopkeeper and ran to kill Sait with a stone. That stone hit me and I got a headache. But we are monks. Forgiveness is our religion. In the Shikshapatri, Lord Shri Swaminarayan has commanded that, even if someone insults us, we should not wish for it in our hearts. And you have accepted the Swaminarayan religion in penance for that stoning. We are delighted to have found a satsangi like you for a stone. It's all true. Swami, but you are Param Bhagavat Sant. Stoned at you, I am sorry. Swami says, Bhagat, that will not happen. Then come my monkhood. I have never had any ill will for you or anyone else. Be that as it may, Lord, but I have been poisoned for life. It has been said in the scriptures that one who insults a saint gets hurt and I am experiencing it directly. Although I am married, 
Because of this sin I have no children there. I am Vanjiu. Swami do something for my welfare. Give me a son. Ravzi began to pray to Lord Bhagat Swami with tears in his eyes. Hearing Ravzi Bhagat's pitiful cry, Gopal Swami was stunned. He started to think deeply about Ravzi's belief. Such a disgrace on my monkhood. Something must be done. Well, with this one concept, Sadguru Shri Gopalananda Swami went to the void. Sitting in silence for a long time. Hour by hour, Swami Ravzi used to dig deeper into Bhagat's heart, his longing, his faith, and his devotion. After deep contemplation and contemplation, Gopalananda Swami meditated on Lord Shri Swaminarayan and prayed to remove Ravzi's trouble. As if God wanted the saints wish to succeed, Swami spoke, Ravzi Bhagat, God will fulfill your wish. Go is my promise. Shri Ji bless everyone. After Swami blessed Ravzi with a son, continued to pray to Lord Shri Swaminarayan. Respecting the wish of the saint, God incarnated a son to Ravzi Bhagat there. Ravzi Bhagat is having Anand Mangal at home. After several months, Ravzi Bhagat took his wife and son to visit Gadda Sadguru Shri Gopalananda Swami. Swami, by your mercy I have this son born there. Place your hands on him and bless him. Gopal Swami said, Ravzi Bhagat, Lord Shri Swaminarayan has fulfilled your wish. This child is blessed with my distance. God bless you all. Now spend the rest of your life in the service of God. That is my prayer. In the Swami Narayan Sampradaya, many people from backward communities like Ravzi Bhagat were led happy lives by the teachings of able monks like Gopalananda Swami. Salutations to those saints. Epileptic Pain Relief In a village near Junagad there were three Kambi brothers. One of the brothers had epilepsy. He used to fall down due to dizziness. Homework cannot be done with it. Later women did not take care of him properly when his brothers were busy with their own work. So he became like an idiot in hunger and pain. Seeing him, a Haraj took pity on him and brought him to the temple of Junagat. There Sadguru Guntitananda Swami started taking care of his food and drink etc. He used to sit in one place in the beginning. Gradually, with food and the care of the monks, his body recovered, but the epileptic seizures continued. In such a coincidence, Gopalananda Swami came to stay in Junagad for one month as per his rule every year. The man with epilepsy used to visit the square of the temple many times as his body recovered. Once he was turning a chook when he got dizzy and fell down. His body began to stretch. At that time, it was time to go to the temple for darshan, so seeing the right time, Guntitananda Swami took Gopalananda Swami with him and walked the same way, so Gopalananda Swami saw Kambi lying in a daze and stopped. After inquiring, Guntitananda Swami requested him to have mercy on him by telling him the fact of his extremely sad condition. Hearing that, Swami looked at the patient for a while. At that time the man got up due to Sudha and fell at Swami's feet at the request of everyone. Wake him up and say to the Swami, Some years ago you let a puppy down into the well with its neck tied and it died, it has caused such a disease. But go, worship God from now on, it will do good. Kambi remembered his sin on Swami's advice and fell down at Swami's feet. After that his pain went away completely and he became a good devotee and became happy. Brahman of Mahudha. 
There was a very poor Sushil Brahman in Mahudha village. He had great devotion to Gopalananda Swami and considered him as his supreme guru. When he heard the arrival of Swami even in the surroundings, he would run and do the attendance with love. Swami also had good grace on him. The Brahman's wife had passed away, leaving only a boy without a mother. He raised him. When the Brahman was about to succumb to death, he entrusted his son to his well-wisher, Guru Gopalananda Swami. In his mind, he had no other Valishri in the world. In his distance, he was sure that the boy would be taken care of by Swami, so he died peacefully, giving up all worries. Then the Swami consoled the Brahman's son by calling him and asking whether you want to marry or renounce our family, what do you want? Then he said, I don't want to become a recluse, I will stay in the world. Swami says, Okay. Then after recommending the Harijans, Swami started taking care of him, not only that but the Harijans also got him married due to his age. Now he became a Brahman householder, plying his trade by arms, etc., and maintained the devotion to Gopalananda Swami which he had inherited from his father. After some time that Brahman woman fell seriously ill, and as it increased day by day she died one day. He was alone in the house and thus saw the dead woman, saddened, very frightened and sat like a thoughtless person. In that he remembered Swami. He knew that Swami was in a nearby village at that time, so, covering the dead body of the woman, without telling anyone the fact, he hurriedly ran, he came to Purpat Swami. As soon as he saw Swami, he prostrated and wept and told Swami about the woman's death just as a son sings of grief to his father. Swami also took pity and gave him patience and said, Go and cremate him because what was meant to be done has happened. Swami explained to him a lot that if he dies he will not live again, so go and do his action. But the Brahman started imagining and fell at his feet. He only insisted that you kill me. But I will not go from here. Why should I be sad because my father has given me into your hands? Saying that, he became extremely depressed and helpless. Swami's distance was raised by mercy. Hearing the sad cry of the poor Brahman's house breaking, Swami could not bear the pain of surrender. Great hearts began to rise in the ocean with waves of grace and eyes began to shower grace. Those who know the immeasurable divine power of Swami, seeing the posture of that time, would feel that now the character of grace is beyond measure. Swami thought for a while and warned the Brahman that you should go home, rub your wife with your palate and then come back. Don't talk to anyone. Brahman had full faith in Swami. So he hurried home and hurried home, began to rub the veiled woman's head, that is why the woman's body was immediately infused with life. This made the Brahman very happy. The woman recovered well, after attending to her properly, he came back to Swami the next day and told this fact to Swami in the middle of the meeting. The Brahman put the matter in public so the Swami reprimanded him very much. The ego of the Jain Muni took off. The strength of the Jains in Botard village was good. However, Bhaga Doshi who was a Jain devotee became Satsangi after seeing the supernatural opulence of Lord Swaminarayan. But he had to bear some troubles from the Jain class every now and then. Once a venerable Jain Nemi Vijayji, famous for his learning in Kathiavar, came to Botat. He began to frighten Bhaga Doshi etc. that there is no God in this fifth ara, what did you find special in Swaminarayan? Call them here and I will see them. 
I am a true Jain Muni only if you all leave his discipleship. In this way he created a lot of confusion. Finally, due to many titles, Bhagadoshi sent a man to where Gopal Swami was in Saranpur and told all the details in a letter. Requested to arrive immediately. Swami read the letter and thought about the situation that if he does not go on this occasion, Jain Muni in a place like Botard will create many wrong ideas about satsang and Vanik Harijans will get a lot of honor. Therefore, for the sake of the reputation of satsang and Harijans, we should go. Thus Swami immediately connected the car and left. When the Swami's carriage arrived in Botard Bazar, Jain sage Nemivijayji is standing at the front door of the Jain Upashraya with both hands holding a shark thali on both sides. When the car reached there, on the main's orders, both the men had a fight with each other. Swami immediately stopped the car and got out of the car near the Upashraya. At that time, people were full of fat. Swami calmly asked Jain Muni, why are you doing activities against satsang? Jain Muni said sternly, Who are you? Swami replied to his indiscretion that we are the Lord of the life of the world. Who is Swami Narayan when Jain Muni says? Swami says, He is our Lord too. So Jain Muni started laughing and said that you are pretending like this. What kind of godliness has been instilled in you? Show it so that I can see it. Your talk will not work with me. Swami was immobilized by such insolent words of the Jain sage and sat down on the front porch and got a view in front of him in that the flow of Jain Muni's speech stopped completely and his eyes became dull. Both his hands were stuck on the door handle. Thus the situation has become fixed. Everyone saw that Jain Muni was inert like a statue. Hence the discussion started that Swami is a magician and he has hurt. Saying this, some of the Jones began to fall in fear, then some curious people started gathering. After some time passed, people requested Swami to leave this state of Jain Muni. So the Swami looked at him again, and the Jain sage came to his senses, but now he quickly ran and prostrated at the Lord's feet and said that you are as powerful as you say. Forgive my trespass, I give up condemning your cult from today. When the people asked the Jain Muni out of curiosity, he said that I went to the Samadhi and saw the Jain Tirthankaras and they told me the greatness of this great man and before coming to consciousness I had another vision of Yampuri, it has caused me a lot of pain. Today I have realized that condemning this satsang is ignorance. This greatly increased the popularity of satsang among the people and Botad, which was difficult to penetrate became a stronghold of satsang. Bhagadosh's talent also increased to such an extent that in some other places the title from the Jain caste would have been relieved by him. So far that talent and reputation has descended in the lineage of Bhagadoshi, the glory of the Lord in the face of Maharaj. Two or three days before Shriji Maharaj's body was laid to rest, Ratri said to Rehla Shukamuni in his service, Call Muktananda Swami and bring him. Don't let anyone else come along. Then Shukamuni called Muktananda Swami. Then Maharaj said to Muktananda Swami, Will you do as we say? Then Muktananda Swami said, Yes, Maharaj, I will do as you say and obey those whom you command. Then Maharaj says, Sweep my feet. Then Muktananda Swami touched Maharaj's feet. Then Maharaj says, Elephants have scratched. Then Maharaj asked Shukamuni, Will you do as I say? Then Shukamuni did not say anything. Then Maharaj says, 
All of you should be under the command of Gopalananda Swami. Gopalananda Swami is a very great monk, Anadi Muktaraj, and he is conducting the survey in Akshardham. They sing the glory of Purushottam to everyone and have been in the service of Purushottam Narayana. They have come here as one. Then Muktananda Swami said, Hey Maharaj, this is very big. And why didn't you talk to us for so long? Then Maharaj said, It is not good that some of the old ones are not fixed, but they are too big. Thus Shriji Maharaj, before passing away, glorified Gopalananda Swami himself and kept him as the head of all saints and acharyas. Places of Prasadi in Torda His house is prominent among Khushal Bhatt's iconic locations in Torda. He was born in this house. As written earlier, Khushal Bhai's father Motiram Thakar was the priest gore of the Jagirdar of Torda. The house was gifted to him and his descendants to live in. Till now the house is well preserved. The house is old, but the roof is replaced by a cement roof with cement pillars. The house has a gokhla, a new cupboard and a net and wall in front of the house. Vidya Ravishankar Vallabhram Thakar, a descendant of Kushal Bhai, passed away in 196. Before his death, he donated that house to the Swaminarayan Temple in Torda in 1959. So Devo Puja at home is currently done from the temple. That house is now in the possession and occupation of the temple. Four-year-old Kushal Bhai, who was four years old in Anand, took out a bag of jaggery from a seven feet high kothi and divided the jaggery into the clay kothi etc. His pathar is kept in the temple. The temple of Swaminarayan belongs to Prasadi. The idols of Radha Krishna enshrined in it are about 700 years old and Kushal Bhatt worshipped in the old temple for 18 years. The old temple was situated in front of the well inside the present temple. Many miracles happened when Radha Krishna idols and Hari Krishna idol were erected in Shikharband temple in Samvat 2010. So all the temple space is Prasadi. There are fields to the north of the house. In it, the Mahodo that Kushal Bhai had sweetened in the Barbar Kalidas Hirbhai's field has been preserved. It belongs to Prasadi. Dhareshwar Mahadev is located in the eastern direction. It is said that Kushal Bhai practiced Ashtanga Yoga there. To the south is Budheli River Prasadi, because with the blessings of Kushal Bhatt the water does not dry up in it. South of the river is the palace of Bhuleshwar Mahadev. That Dehra has idols of Mahadev, Ganpati, Nandi and Hanuman. Kushal Bhatt had this Ladu offering to Ganpati, Nandi and Mahadev. There is a barrel in front of this Dehra. Moksha Khushal Bhatt saved the snake living in it. Bhatt also performed many miracles even where he has a ward. On the west side of Mahadev is the palace of Achleshwar Mahadev on the edge of the hill on the bank of Budheli River. An idol of Hanuman is placed in front of it. In this Dehra, Srihari Vipraveshe who came to taunt Kushal Bhatt and who was sitting on the Orsia is embedded with cement in the pavement in front of Orsio Mahadev. There are two billy trees near Mahadev in the western direction. The place where Motiram Thakur performed the four Gayatris is still there. There is Bukulvil vegetation. It is used in medicine. The cremation ground of Torda Pahada and Budheli villages is on the bank of Budheli river in front of Achleshwar Mahadev. The water of Burheli river has such a quality that if bones are thrown into the water after burning the ashes, the bones will be swallowed. So this place is a pilgrimage. Kushal Bhatt lived in Torda for about three decades 
and performed many miracles and miracles. So Torda's Rej Raja is holy and sanctifying. So every satsangi will find his journey salvific.